legislators. Um, I'm Pat Borden, and this is my husband, Terry Borden. We're from Phoenix, Arizona. Please stop and carefully consider the impact criminal legislation will have before proposing or supporting it. One out of every 100 adults in the United States is behind bars. This is five times more than Great Britain, nine times more than Germany, and 12 times more than Japan. It has been conservatively estimated that one to two percent of our prison population have been wrongfully convicted. The following are some facts on post-conviction DNA exonerations provided on the Innocence Project's website. There have been 300 post-conviction DNA exonerations in the United States since 1989. 17, 17 have, people have been sentenced to death before DNA proved their innocence. The average length of time set, served by exonerees is 13 years. In almost 40% of DNA exonerations, the actual perpetrator has been identified by DNA testing. Our loving son was sentenced to 75 years for allegedly touching three children very briefly with no groping or manipulation over over, I say, their clothing in public with no skin-to-skin -skin contact. He was not accused of any of the other behaviors of sexual predators, such as selecting and developing a relation with the alleged victims, atten attempting to coerce them into silence, seeking any further contact or threatening them. Even though he had never been arrested or convicted of any offense, our son would face an impossible challenge. Under Arizona statute ARS 131410A, such touching is considered child molestation. Arizona's child molestation statutes shift the burden to the defendant and presume his guilt unless, in effect, he proves his innocence. The prosecution is not obliged to prove that the touching was motivated by a sexual in interest. Rather, the defendant must prove that any touching was not sexually motivated. This is an almost impossible challenge and becomes even more so for a person like our son who has a lifelong battle with his neurological condition called ataxia, which causes him to be clumsy, uncoordinated, and perceived as strange or weird by people who don't know him. The jurors interpreted the symptoms of our son's medical condition as evidence of guilt. The unconstitutional law shifting, the burden of proof to defend it, makes anyone who cares for a child to the same subject to the same charges as our son. Imagine being a nurse, doctor, social worker, teacher, aide, or babysitter, and in the course of your work, having to touch a child near their private area to perhaps change a diaper. You too may have to fight for your life, as did our son. The Arizona Public Defenders Association, with the support of the Arizona Attorneys for Criminal Justice, has supported our son's case with an amicus brief clearly outlining why the Arizona statute is unconstitutional. We fear our son will die in prison for a crime he did not commit. Had he murdered three people, his sentence would have been less. It is impossible for the children in his life to understand and they ask why legislators make such laws, which keep their loving cousin, uncle, in prison for a crime that never happened. Our plea is that others do not go through what our son has endured, and we implore our legislators to carefully consider the ramifications of laws they make so that their laws don't turn ordinary citizens into criminals just to make life easier for the state prosecutor. Such draconian laws often turn prosecutors, motivated by the desire for re-election, into both judges and juries and give the United States the highest incarceration rate in the world. We have 25% of the world's prisoners. 
we incarcerate a greater percentage of our population than any country on earth, said Michael Jacobson, director of the nonpartisan Vera Institute of Justice. Our epidemic of incarceration costs us taxpayers $63.4 billion a year. Because our son was wrongfully accused and convicted, our son and his family and friends have suffered enormous personal and financial costs. When our son was arrested, there was a phone message on his answering machine from the governor's office asking him to come in for a job interview a job he worked so hard to qualify for. In spite of the fact that he had no prior arrests or convictions, and he was accused of touching children over clothing with no groping or manipulation, absence of any other sexual predatory behavior, the bail was set at $500,000. During his bond, he found work and continued to pay his bills. In fact, unknown to him, the manager of the department of a major bank in which he worked as a temporary employee filed for a permanent job for him only to have it put on hold when the background check revealed his arrest. We had to buy a housing in Phoenix, Phoenix and put our home in New York up for sale and take money from our retirement. We can only estimate that we have spent over a half a million dollars for his legal bills and related expenses. Our family has spent thousands of his family has spent thousands of dollars traveling from New York to Arizona to visit him. Our son has missed deaths, births, weddings, graduations, and holidays, and his family has had to deal with his absence from these events. We will never know the full impact the children may have suffered who testified at the trial and those who were involved with our son's case. The cost to society with legal fees and his incarceration. The impact this has had on young children who love our son and ask, as an example, why a murderer gets 25 years and their uncle or cousin who is innocent gets 75 years in prison. The cost to us in losing our home, our retirement savings, and the emotional toll on our bodies. And most importantly, what our son has endured because he has refused to admit guilt for a crime he did not commit and believed in our judicial system was fair and honest. To this day, he has continued to profess his innocence. He has turned down pre- and post-trial bargain offers. As legislatures, please remember our son's shocking sentence and be conscious of all the consequences when you are lobbying or dr drafting laws. We ask that you champion a bill that will establish an innocence commission to deal with wrongful convictions and to try to reform our broken ju judicial system.